Um, so I'm Chris McBride. Uh, some of you guys know me as The Wiz. Uh, I've been uh, a member of Style and did demos of back in the day, and I still do them occasionally. But the last nine years, I've been working on Dermaster. Um, Dermaster is, uh, if you don't know, is allows you to edit your um, uh, edit your disc images that we have. Um, previous versions of Dermaster, you know, we we. We do D64s and D81s and a whole bunch of slew of other uh, other things. So I've been working on version 3.0 for off and on for I don't know two or three years now, um, trying to get a, some cool things in there. Um, a lot of the things that we've been putting in there the last couple of years have all been uh, uh, the users have come up and, and suggested them. So. If you guys do have features that you, that you don't see now, you know, always feel free to ask me. Um, original plan was to get to release v, uh, V3 today, but we ran into a few problems this week. Um, the biggest one is it, one of the, insula the insulation wasn't working quite right. So it's going to take us a, a hopefully, hopefully we can get out maybe next weekend. But I figure since I'm here, I'll go ahead and show you, uh, show you a few things. Um, to start with, uh, Elwix has been doing a, an incredible job with the um, with the uh, documentation, and I'm just going to kind of scroll through this a little bit. This will be up online when we release. Um, but basically, he goes into pretty pretty in depth on how to use it. You know, even all the way down into you know some some cool screenshots. Um, so I may refer back to this in a couple. Of a couple of points. Um, so I uh, sort of uh, I, got, I kind of want to go over some of the features that uh, have been in the have been in here in the past, and uh, some of the things that I've done to improve on those features. Um, to, to begin with, I for version for 3.0, I basically did a rewrite. Now everyone tells you you shouldn't do a rewrite, but there's a few things I needed to get done to. To basically make it better, um, and for a few features I'll talk about later later on. Um, in addition to that, I also redid the the, the UI. Now, if you do, if you're a fan of Dermat, look very similar to previous versions, but the underlying UI has been uh, I'm using a, a new framework, um, which gives us a few advantages, uh, and it allows me to freshen up some of the um, some of the features, like like the options is more of a um, it looks more like a, a typical, uh, a more re uh, uh, it, it kind of brings things into the future or into today, today. We also have, you know, help with a little bit of help with all of the options and it's more of a property page as opposed to what I had before, which was just a list of, of, uh, of check boxes. Um, so I'm going to start off with talking about a few of the features that I really like about um, about Dermaster and something um, I don't know how you know if, if people actually know how's oh, uh, not working um, so a couple of one of the biggest features that I've always liked about Dermaster is the ability to uh, to do a search um, and unfortunately I'd already had this running but the idea was um, if I wanted to find all the um, all the discs that have a, a you know, the name with style in it, I have, I support the asterisk and the question mark um, wildcards. Now, this is actually one of the bugs that I need to, to solve. You can see how it's getting chopped off. But basically, you know, quickly I just, I just searched through almost 600 discs uh, to show all the, the files that, on the disc that end in style. Uh, one of the things I added this version is uh, a more of a, a, a log to kind of show you what's going on. And at the same time, I also have the save results button up here, which will um, save, save this results list in a CSV format. And so you can say, hey, you know, let me go find all the files, you know, all the Geos files or whatever and, and dump them out. Um, and on top, uh, uh, in addition to that, what we can do is we can come in here and find the one I wanted. 
uh, we can we can sort here sort of backwards and double click on it we'll bring that we'll bring that disk up and there it is I've got I've got it selected um, so uh, to get into one thing uh, you know if anybody knows about this is we have the ability to hook up to an emulator and actually uh, this feature is called run in but basically all it is is a um, you have a list of we have a menu label uh, I call it an emulator, but we can actually run you know anything. You have a batch file here or an XE, and then some arguments. And what it'll do is it'll uh, load in the file or the the, the disk in the file uh, and pass it off to the XE that 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 you that you put here. And it's all run off of a uh, command, you know, control one, control two, and so on. Uh, this is a feature that you know not a ton of people know about. Um, you continue on to to another big feature that. Uh, Elwix actually requested batch processing. This allows you to go in and take uh, uh, a, a directory of disks and run a set of commands on those disks. Uh, we've actually expanded this out in this version. Um, there's three things you can do. You can save each directory in a format that can be saved as. In addition, we can um, we can extract all the files on the disk if you want to I'm not really sure why you'd want to do it go do it but if you want to pull the PRGs off of a set of disk you can run this and you'll end up with uh, a, a disk or a directory full of, of your PRGs we can also go and decompress files into D64s so if you say have a bunch of uh, links files or a bunch of uh, zip files or something it'll go through and decompress all of them and, and generate D64s out of them um, and there's a bunch of options that you can do uh, based on, you know, which one of these you're doing. But uh, if you're going to say, if you're going to export the directory, you can specify uh, which, how you're going to save it. In this case here, we're, you know, it's, it's going to save it as a bitmap, um, and you can specify if we want to use uppercase, and um, and you can also specify what what color you want to use if it's not the default color. And again, we uh, I added the the same thing. Um, with fine, I have the, the log, uh, a better log down here. Um, and then what we do, uh, so that's that's the batch process. It's pretty powerful, um, it's, you know, pretty useful, uh, pretty useful feature in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> explain a few other features that you can do at the disk level. Uh, one thing I added was, um, let's see how we're going to do this. We had, uh, I'm going to bring up this disk here. Um, and what I've got is I have this file here and I'm going to delete it. And what I can do is I have this ability to call it list file chains. And there's three things that, that this goes up and, and generates. It'll generate a list of um, each of your files and it'll show you the, the, it'll show you the links in those files. And then you can edit you know that sector that's that's in that file. There's also uh, a free chain. Now I just happened to delete that that one file, um, and this is actually <coughs> is the this chain of, of that was freed up freed up. And the idea here is you can go, you can pull up an old disk and maybe try to piece together a file. And this is this is one contiguous free chain. And what I can actually do is go in and regenerate this back into the file. And, and there we go. I have the free chain that um, that I that I deleted. And we can actually, in this particular case, we can. It's actually a full file, and so it'll load up and and, and you know still works just fine. Um, there's one other thing we do is I have the the single blocks. These are the free blocks that don't that aren't in a chain. I put those into a separate list because chances are they're not part of a, a file. They might be, but chances are they're not. Um, so there was, this was sort. This is sort of a uh, disk recovery um, mechanism. Um, 
I also added, I guess I actually added this back in the previous version, but I don't remember. Uh, we have the, we can check for cross links and which will show up. Uh, and this is where you have two, um, two, two files that actually point, point to the same, same sector. And what this will do in this particular case, there are, there are none found. Uh, but if we did something like this, um, so 20 C, I can go up here and I'll change this guy to. So at this point, we now have a cross link, and there we go. So we have the two file names and where they crossed at. Um, this actually probably could be a little bit. Uh, a little bit more interesting and maybe it should sh show you the previous guys but one of the things that we can do is I can jump to uh, spider graphic style and I can jump through and you can um, you can jump back and forth you know in the list of files or in the in the in the, in the file chain um, Another couple other things that we added. A, a big user request that I added the previous version was the ability to print a disk sleeve. Um, <clears throat> so, so I have. So this was actually, this is a, a, a feature that was in the previous version. Uh, basically what you do is you take this and you can cut it out and make your own, uh, your own disk sleeve. And it'll print, I believe, up to 40 uh, images. And if, it's, if, a, if, it, if a single column doesn't fit, then it'll, it'll print two columns. Well, then I had a request this last time for, um, I had a request for a double-sided. And the way the double-sided works is you take the current file that you're on, and that's side A, and that's going to be on the left side. And then you have to you have to open up and select another file, and that'll be side um, that'll be basically side B, and then it'll show you uh, you have the two your your double-sided disk that you can display. Um, another feature that I've I've worked on that's sort of works in conjunction with this. I expanded out the multi-select so that you can actually select, uh, in the previous version, you can only select a contiguous block of uh, files. But now what we can do is we can select, um, you know, multiple different types, or, you know, multiple files. And you can also select, I don't know if I have a, a disk open that I can do this with. We can also go in and select just the, the, you know, just the programs or whatever. And at this point, we can then uh, we can say we want to print um, just the selection. Oops, I don't want to print it. Print the preview on the selection. And at this point, we're only going to include the selected files in your print. And so, you know, this 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 way, you can only uh, include the important <coughs> files on your on your on your sleeve. Um, at the same time, do we want to hand these out? Yeah, sure. I have a, a, a sample of, of how the the print preview or the print works. Let's get our website address on there, which uh, will be where Dermaster will be available in maybe about a week, hopefully. Um. So while, while we're talking about the selection, um, most most commands can be um, most of the commands that work on a file level. Most of the commands that can work on a file level will work on all the all the selections. Um, so I have a few commands. Um, to format the uh, disk, so we can uh, we can less, we can write justify the files. Uh, we can um, we can left justify them all. 
and we can also uh, toggle the case. This is actually a new feature that was added. Um, where's it at? We can change the case so I can make them all uppercase, and I can also toggle the case in, in case not all of your files are uppercase, and you know some of these selections are uppercase and lowercase. Maybe you just want to toggle them. That was actually a, another feature that was requested uh, by a user. I don't know why I didn't have it included since version one, but um, and in uh, pretty much all of the all the commands will work on a, a selection, including like drag and drop. So I just pulled out the the selected files. Um, while while I'm on that subject, I have a complete a complete undo stack that goes back uh, pretty much to the beginning. Um, It'll undo everything that you've done uh, in case you do screw up. Let's see, I think that was pretty much at the directory level. Oh, yeah, one other feature that I added was the ability to compare two disks. Um, and this works very similar to um, the print preview in that you, you, t you have one disk open you say compare disk, you select the disk you want to compare it to. And what this will do is give you a list of, of sectors. It's a sector level compare, by the way. It'll give you a list of sectors that are different. Um, and it, it's sort of, it's probably not the best tool, but now what it'll, what it'll do is it opens up the two sectors and then you, it's up to you to figure out how to, you know, what's actually different between the two of them. Um, we also added, uh, I added a couple new um, file formats that we deal with. Um, .nib, like .g64, .nib is read only. It basically, it converts it internally into a, a, a D64. I added uh, support for IDE64. Um, IDE64 format is a pain in the neck to deal with. And so I kind of took the easy way out and it's also read only. Um, so you can pull files off of it, but you can't say you can't edit them and, and save it back. Um, what else do we add? We added uh, spine format and a, and a couple other um, compression compression formats. We also, I'm not saying we have all the formats, but we went through and, and tested a bunch of the various links and a ver and various um, uh, some of the various archive uh, arcs and SDAs and stuff. That, I'm sure there's still a few out there that we missed, but you know we try to make sure we, we, we caught, caught them all. Um, and I think I also added DFI, and I think that's a new a new format. Uh -huh. Which one? M2I. Oh, M2I. I really forgot about that one. I'm not even sure what that one is. Yeah. So we added M2I. Uh, that was also a. a uh, it was a user request, and I did it a while back, and I don't even know what the format is anymore. Um, see, so yeah, I think I've covered most of the uh, most of the main things I wanted to um, to cover here. So, another cool thing that I added: um, the previous version is of Durmaster uh, would show you a a seek, a seek file and I have a seek file loaded, um, as well as um, file out here um, it would show you it would uh, um, you know it would show you a seek file and as a basic file those are the only two viewers I had I decided I wanted to expand that and uh, have a few more um, a few more viewers So I wanted to add a few more viewers, and so I added the ability to to, uh, to show some artwork, and I support most of the standard uh, non-interlaced artwork: uh, Amica Paint, Art Studio, um, you know, 
high res, uh, a koala, a, a packed koala, um, a ton of a ton of different formats. If you double click on this, I choose a format based on some heuristics, based off of the file size, uh, the, the starting address. There's a couple that are based off of um, there's some internal uh, um, you know flags and stuff that I can use, but basically, basically it is based off some heuristics. Um, I also added I'm going to find it in here someplace. Uh, I also added the ability to display fonts as well as two by two fonts. But my automatic uh, automatic viewer is based off of, like I said, several heuristics. And if it, if it can't figure out what to display, it'll try to display it as a similar language. Well, this particular file is, I guess I screwed up when I saved it out. And you can see it's too big, because you can see the other guys are, are nine blocks, and this one's 10. So you can actually force it. Um, you can force which file you want to display it as. And you can see this is actually a two by two font. Um, every format I display, you can actually manually force it into, and then there's a whole bunch of uh, formats that I didn't think were as popular, and so I put them on a second, you know, a secondary menu. And sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. Um, I also added the ability to view the file as a hex file. This was a this was a, another feature that was requested, um, and um, you know you have the ability to see it as hex. One of the things we can do here is we can actually copy out. Um, we can we can actually copy this data out. And there's a couple different formats you can copy it as. Um, Is that an editor as well, or just a? Hex it's just display? it's just a viewer. Okay. So one of the things that I decided early on, Durmaster is about uh, editing disks and allowing you to see what's on your disk. It's not it's not this end all be all. Uh, editor, so it's not you can't edit the artwork, you can't edit the the font, you can't edit the sequin the SQL files, uh, you can't edit in, in hex. It's just if you want to edit the file, it, it, um, you either use a standalone editor or you can go tweak the bytes in in the sector editor. Um, so jump to sector. How you would in this case jump to sector with the right. Click. Right. So um, one of the things that you can do is let me see. Oh, it's like here one you have one e one e. Well, if you know what you're doing, um, just a bad example. If you know what you're doing, you may be editing something that um, has uh, maybe you're maybe you're looking at an REL file or you're looking at something that has a jump table. So in this particular case, we have zero three zero one. So we can actually jump to three one, and it'll jump to the sector editor. Or what you can do is you can jump to the sector that that block of data is, is, is on. And you can see that, uh, um, I don't know where this, this is, but you can see how, you know, this group of data, is, it's very similar. And so this, this 3-1 is, is, is somewhere in this, on this page. I don't know where it is. I'll have to find it. Um, can you edit in that view? So you can edit that. You can't, cannot edit this view. So the other, the other one. Oh, the vendor, yeah, the sector, the sector editor is you can, you can, uh, we can actually edit in the sector editor. And now we're actually changing the bytes on the disk until, well, assuming you, they get saved. Um, and again, because it's an, because I'm editing it, I can actually undo what I did. Three ones in the bottom row, second number in. What was that? Bottom left, you can see your three ones. You were looking for it. Oh, this one right here? There you go. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure I'm going, I'm hitting everything here. Uh, back to the new file. Um, the header, and then the, 
uh, you know, of course, assembly language is just, it's, just, it's basically just a dumb um, assembly. It doesn't do anything. It just takes it and tries to disassemble it. It doesn't try to, you know, be smart about it. And really, again, it's more about, um, you know, kind of letting you figure out what the file is. But with um, this viewer here is basically my seek viewer. And with the seek viewer, we can also copy stuff out um, as well. So have that ability. Um, oh, I guess uh, the other thing I need to talk about is when you save a, when you save a disk, there are, several, there are several things you can do. Uh, in a couple of cases, you can actually convert the, the file type. Uh, for example, if you read a .nib in, you can save it out as a .d64. But I also have the, I've added the ability to, in the past, you can save out as a ping. Um, I'm sorry, as a bitmap, but I added, I added, uh, I added the ping format. Um, and so, um, we'll save it out as a ping. And the other thing that we did this version is, is uh, Elwix of Style has been working on trying to come out with a, uh, um, a comprehensive Commodore 64 font, including Unicode characters. Because most of the Commodore 64 character set, there's a Unicode equivalent. And so you have a Unicode mapping. Um, and so what I did is I actually generated uh, using that font and using the mapping, we can save out, uh, there's an uh, RTF file and an HTML file. And with the HTML file, it looks correct. One of the nice things about this is this is actually using the font, but because we're using Unicode, as long as there's half a dozen Unicode characters that don't exist in Unicode, but if you used um, if you if you used a different font and you had a lot of the the, uh, the CG graphics like the, the arc and the circle and the, the heart and the spade, they would and you had a, the the a Unicode font that supported them, they would show up. It won't look as nice, but it will still show up. Um, but we, but in this case, uh, with HTML, we actually gave you three options of, of saving uh, stuff out. This particular one gets saved as a, um, I don't really need to show it to you, it's saved as, as a full HTML file. It has an embedded CSS to support um, the font and the colors. Uh, you can turn the CSS off and, and uh, link to, this, to a CSS file. This is a, um, this is a, an option. Um, we have, uh, we want to embed the CSS, and if you don't embed it, you can specify a link. And then we'll, we'll and then that way, if, if you want to post this stuff on your website, you can actually just have a CSS file in, instead of embed it in, in every single HTML file. You can also um, you can also indicate that you want this to be headless. In which case, we essentially save out the uh, just the uh, the minimum necessary for the directory. We don't save out. The HTML tag, and we'll save out the body tag and, and the CSS tag and stuff. Now we will save out the CSS, um, the styles, and so you know uh, you still need to support the the CSS styles in, in some way. But the idea is you can take rather than taking the, the HTML file and, and taking the piece and co copy and pasting it, you'll have just a bunch of images that you can just pull in uh, into your file and, and into your HTML. Um, so I think that's uh, most of the major stuff from the program itself. But I didn't stop there. One of the cool things, one of the coolest things I think I did in this version, I don't know if everyone's going to agree, um, Windows has a, um, a preview feature. And you can see, so this is the HTML file and this is the ping file. Um, but what I did is I've actually implemented and hooked up Durmaster to the Windows Preview. So we can actually get a preview of, um, you know, right there in Windows of pretty much everything that I can open. 
What's even cooler is I use the same code to allow you to open up single files and you know there we go and we're using the same previews to you know display the files. Um, and this is something I use all the time. So I don't even have to bother to open up a file. I can just, there it is. I can see what, what's in the directory. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is probably the number one feature I've been requested. Well, maybe not the number one feature. One of the number one features people have been asked for since day one is the ability to script Dermaster. They want to go uh, and write some code to, I don't know what they want to do. I put it off and put it off. It's complicated. One of the reasons I, I rewrote Dermaster for version 3 was to give me the ability to add scripting. Um, so I rewrote everything so I uh, so the back end was separated from the front end, but I couldn't figure out how to script it. And part of the problem is, is it's just hard uh, without having to embed a scripting language. No one can really tell me what they wanted to do. They just wanted the ability. And so I couldn't figure out. I, I was going to try to expose it as some some sort of CLI where you know you pass in dash D and the file name and dash something else and I just couldn't figure it out. A couple months ago I decided you know I've been working on Python I've been and um, so what I decided to do was write a Python wrapper for Dermaster. Um, I don't it, it's not really something I can kind of show um, But what I've done is I've written a, a Python wrapper for Dermaster and I've exposed basically three classes. We have a, a disk class, uh, a files class, and a, and, and, a, um, and a file class. And what you can do is uh, with the disk class, we can, you can, load up a, you can load up a file and you can return the ASCII name and the Petsky name. You can, uh, when you save it back out, so if I can get the, when I save it back out, you can specify, um, I don't have it on here, but here you can see how, I, you know, if you're saving off an HTML, you can specify whether or not you want it to be headless or C, the CSS link. Um, you can, you know, save out the ping images, the bitmap images, you can save it out, you know, pretty much anything you can do with Dermaster, you can do from Python. Um, <clears throat> So that was that was something that I, hopefully people will you know make use of, but you know it's out there. Um, I guess a couple other features I, I, I forgot to mention that I, I want to talk about. Um, <coughs> so I decided early on to. Um, allow you to uh, create your own your own palettes. So I don't know if you remember what it looked like before, but this is using a different palette than I was just using. Um, it's sort of a hidden feature, and basically the way it works is uh, you, in, in the directory that you, um, where your XE is, you, you have a, val a, a vice palette file, and you call it Dermaster, dot vpl and if you have that out there i'll load that up and if it's not there then i go with the default palette which is um which is sort of the pepto pepto palette i'm not sure if that really came up it looks diff different before but this is diff this is di uh, the pepto palette where just a second ago we were looking at this go dot palette um one other feature that is sort of an experimental feature, it hasn't had a lot of testing, and I can't show you on here because um, I don't have some of the stuff installed. I have OpenCBM support. What this allows you to do is, if you have the OpenCBM stuff installed, and you have like a Zoom floppy or whatever, you can actually use Dermaster to read in, read and write disks on your, on your floppy. Um, it's a little bit slow, which is, I, I don't really like it. Personally, my opinion is use the tools that Zoom floppy, floppy ships with, rip your disk, and you know work on the disk. But you will have the ability to you know sector edit on a floppy disk. Um, I think that uh, pretty much covers everything I wanted to 
to hit. Uh, are there any questions? Can you read text files? I'm sorry? Yes, you can. Well, you can read. So, uh, Drum Master so, uh, has uh, complete drag and drop support. Um, to this keyboard. Okay, so I've got, uh, I have this foo.txt file here, and I can drag it right into Dermaster, and, you know, there we go. There's the text file. It got converted into text key, and, and there it is. Now I can also take I can take this same file and uh, export it back out as a variety of things. I can save it as a seek file. I can actually save it'll save this image that you see as HTML or as a ping, or you can save it back out as um, you can save it back out as uh, a text file. So that is actually one thing I, I, I guess I kind of uh, skipped over. So you can just save it as a Word file on your PC? A text file. Uh, it, I, I don't support Word, but... Um, so one of the things, another thing you can actually do is I can actually export this image as uh, a bitmap, for example. And I am going to put this... Mm -hmm. Here, and I want to go to where's Art Studio. Oh, there we go. And there it is. This is this is a bitmap that I just now I just saved. So you can export any file as a handful of other files, and if it is a sequential file, then it can be say you can export it as text, and that's how you convert from Petsky to ASCII. Which is another thing that you can actually do with the batch processing. And the batch processing, you can actually extract files and, uh, you know, let's save these. Oh, this is something I probably should have this bitmap stuff up here. I can actually extract all the sequential files as ASCII. And then it'll go through, and if you have a sequential file, it'll save that as a text file and convert it to ASCII. Anything else? I have found this tool incredibly useful. I'm sorry, I can't hear you back there. I have found this tool incredibly useful. I can't wait to get my hands on this new version, but uh, it's saved disks uh -huh. where I've got the Sector 18 wipe from it. Uh, it's been a godsend of the game management file. So I just wanted to thank you for making oh, it. Oh, you're welcome. Awesome. Um, I do have some beta versions of what, what I'm showing you right now. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share that with some people. But there are a couple bugs, and there's some there's some install issues. So I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work on on your machine. But uh, if you want to take, um, I can maybe give you a copy. But we we're really hoping to get this released today. But you know you know how it goes. So a couple internet questions. Uh, has the partition D81 bug been <laughs> fixed? So I worked with D81. Yes, yes, I believe it has. I'm, I'm sorry, I was going to answer answer a different question. Uh, which I'll, I'll jump into it first. I worked with somebody who uh, was a uh, D80 and D82 enthusiast, and we went back and forth. I didn't always aware of this because I don't use some of these formats I don't use at all, but in previous versions of Durmaster, there was a bunch of bad bugs with D80, D80 and D82. So we, I fixed a ton of bugs in, in, the, in that area. As far as I know, the D81 partition bug, that was actually one of the first bugs I fixed when I uh, moved to, um, I want to work on version 3.0. Um, unfortunately, I didn't expect version 3.0 to take as long as this did. Uh, just some, you know, personal things took me away from it for a while, and uh, otherwise I probably would have released a, you know, 2.3 or 2.0, you know, 2B or something. Um, 
but the problem was once I started working on 3.0, I had branched the code and it was hard to uh, move some bugs back. Another bug that uh, has caught a lot of people is, you'll see that there's this list of, of, of files on here. This list of files is saved as, as an MRU list. And for whatever reason, um, a couple years ago, it's every once in a while, it caused Duramaster to crash. Um, and, and the solution has always been, which is one reason I wasn't in a hurry to put a, a fix out. The solution was you go in and you delete your MRU files in the in the registry, and you know it it just it'll start working. Uh, it was a change in Windows that caused it to happen because it started happening after a Windows update. Um, but I've rewritten all that code, and so you know that bug doesn't exist anymore. Um, so before you get to any of those, what, you had a question over here. Well, okay, I'm very basic on computer now, so I don't want to, I can talk to you afterwards on it, but my main thing is talking with a guy on the Zoom floppy thing. Uh -huh. and what my thing I want to do is take all my stuff off my 1571, my data files, like for word processing and spreadsheet, put them into my PC, is that, and he said, come in and see you guys. So and then, where it can I use them and work with them, or is it where they just be copied into this read-only file? Um, so, it's so difficult. I haven't tested it very, uh, extensively because um, we just don't have a ton of people with the Zoom floppies and, and stuff. But the idea is you can actually read and, and edit your your uh, disks, um, your floppy disks. My recommendation is you pull the stuff off your floppy disk and, and, and edit it locally. But if you wanted to... By locally, you mean uh, On the PC, PC. right. Okay. Um, but then, you know, the idea is you keep it locally. But if you want to put it back on a floppy disk, you can do that I as well. I just put it into the PC and keep it there. Well, if you're going to do that, my personal recommendation is to use the tools that are provided with uh, Zoom Floppy. There are some, there's some really nice batch tools uh, you can speak with Demonger to, because this is what he does, is he, me. Um, he, he <laughs> basically takes disks and turns them in, into D64s and, and D71s. You can do that with Duramaster, but that's not its goal. And so what you can do is you can uh, stick the floppy disk in your floppy drive and then do a save as to a D64 and it'll actually mm -hmm. copy it and save it. But it's not the most efficient way to do it. Yeah, the, I think the difficulty may be if you're using, say, a TimeWorks program or something like that for the 64 to do text files, it's not going to automatically convert that format into usable other than converting it to text. If you have any control codes or things like that, it's probably not going to automatically do that. Most of my files were in Pocket Writer. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm just not sure how well it, I mean, they may convert them over to plain text, but it's hard to know what embedded control can, codes or whatnot that the word processor would have in it with those files. So are you saying it's hopeless? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not saying that. But, but it, it, it may be see, someone else to, you know, maybe something, an added thing of converting into word processor formats. I don't know. Well, there's always a plug in. Right. You do it all the time. Right. Just because it's not now doesn't mean it's not it's ever. I mean, it's just one of those things that um, there's no reason, there hasn't been a reason to do that because no one's requested that option. So that may be an option to do. I don't know. Was there any more uh, uh, questions? Uh, will the text to Petsky uh, auto convert to 40 columns? I think you had a, yeah. a step where you would you drag the so, notepad file or something. Um, yeah, basically, the, the way it works is in the seek, in the seek viewer, uh, this viewer here is it's, it's designed to come up in 40 columns, and you can specify uh, whether I want to word word wrap or, or not. Uh, you can see if I don't word wrap, then I have you know eight lines of text. Sure. Um, and then if you word wrap, you can specify whether to break on the word or not break on the word. I can set my I can set my screen size to different sizes, but that's uh, that's the extent. As far as saving files out, there's no Hey, every 40 characters, you know, put a, a back, you know, a carriage return in. That's not what this is designed for. Sure. After the one minute lag, we'll find out if that was okay. a satisfactory answer. In fact, I just think there's, I just noticed another bug. Um, 
while he's going on, does anybody else have any other uh, any other questions on uh, any, any features? I mean, one um, one thing I, I guess I, I should bring up is we are trying to work on um, we're trying to work on the documentation, and Alex has done an, an incredible job, I think, in, in, in trying to you know show how everything works. Uh, you know, he's got these these numbered screenshots and. and he's very very thorough detail but if you find something you know missing or something you don't understand you know always feel free to ask and one thing that will allow us to do is update the documentation the documentation will be online at style 64org um, and so it'll be a Lumi document that we can manage and fix so I think it's all, that's about all I have Um, Mark screwed. That was always the, the flame war back and forth. The question was, who's FTA? That's, pardon me, VHC's group, one of those groups, and they would always rag on each other, and that was always the tagline. Okay. Well, thank you guys for uh, the internet is impressed. <laughs> thank you guys for uh, paying attention, and, and we'll try to we'll try to get this out in the next. Uh, I'm hoping for next weekend, but we'll see. I don't have a I don't have a hard fast deadline. Just as soon as we get these last few bugs out. <laughs>